chicken flavor and you want to eat it every day and then you get tired of it. Is this what this is? Uh, you know, the fact that we're seeing people talking KKY, 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 or is it real that he's actually making some serious inroads? Tracy, but um, from now to March 2018, I think it's a daunting task. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mahmoud, let me tell you something. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me say. Don't underestimate his ability to mobilize. Which is what I've just said. He is, he is getting down there. Thank you. He's speaking the language, yeah. right? Absolutely. I will not say he may, he may win elections against the time he has, but he's going to be a deciding factor. The other, the second part of it is the fact that when we talk about changing the narrative, he has been able to do that. You see, every time he comes, he speaks, he's talking about issues. He wants to talk about issues. He's speaking about issues. And he's talking to Sayanians that it's enough of this old system that has failed. Again, that message resonates with a lot of Sayanians. That was my opening statement and that also, he's developing anger, also, anger please, agencies please, to get people to act please, on please, key please, issues. Mahmoud, let me finish. Also, but Emmanuel, uh, just a quick to, one. To, to, uh, to most say that elections are actually won at the point of registration. He wasn't a candidate by, uh, at the point of registration. NGC was non-existent by the point of registration. No. If they no. had not no. marshaled people to, no. to, to, to go actually and register to be voters, then how do we expect them to no, win? I don't, I don't think so. No, I, don't no, think no, so. No. I think, I think no, this, that's, no, that's a to misstatement be. to say <laughs> that at the time people register, that's when you win elections. No, no. I think there are still people who no, have not even decided. Day. Also, another significant factor... But undecideds which, are not, are never many. It, it, another significant factor which people are not taking into consideration. Takeaway has almost dominated the diaspora vote. Right? Basically, when you talk about diaspora, they have quite... A Is it a valuable vote. vote unless they come to vote? Yes, they will come to vote. They will influence will they come to vote? The I rippling effect. That. I don't know. They the also, rippling effect. Yes, they also have... Effect. So you're not guaranteed that the diaspora themselves will because come when to you, vote? When you see, if, you, if you're on social media, mm. you will see that his support base is actually in the diaspora. And ho hopefully... That will be translated into vote. Whether or not he succeeds in doing that, it's a completely different But thing. if it took him two years to market himself as a KKY movement to the SLPP, and it still didn't work for That's him it. to actually be a popular candidate to be chosen as flag bearer, no, what makes you think that he will, he will actually Angela, manage within KKY this short time frame? Angela, Angela, Angela. 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 Sorry, let me okay. just... Go ahead, Bainara. Major, oh. major shortcoming has been the fact that which Amamu stated, he spent too much time deciding where he wanted to. I think at that point when he left the, the, the SLPP, it was a little bit too late because, you know, he has few months for elections. Like I said, I don't, I will sit here and tell you, I don't think Kegawa will, will lead in the first round on winning elections. He might come as a third party deciding where to lead if there is a runoff. This is my prediction today. And I know my colleagues... So you're saying to, there's going to be a runoff and KKY will play a will very, very important role? significant role because he is winning. So he he will, who and who? Yes, they are traditional parties. Don't forget this country. <laughs> in an idealistic society, in an idealistic you know, you, 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 country, mm. KKY will win elections. But this is not safe. You have tribal and regional alignment. So basically what you said is it's a shot in the dark. You, you, I, 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 think, I think Emmanuel Safa and my brother Solomon Jamie will have tried more than enough right, to give us the impression of safe. Uh, it isn't possible, right? They have refused to tell the people of this country via this medium what the statistics are, what the figures show, what the data really are. That is, what, that is where the discussion should be, right? The first-time voters, the number of young people between the ages of 18 to 35 who are going to vote this election, Right. Look, what are the and, and, and it shows. What are the you, you, go, it shows go, that go, we have go, go and look at it, right? Substantial I number at least of the people who vote about in this election are young people. I mean, uh, uh, Safa Abdullah. And so I see real possibilities. The bottom line There's is... There's actually a majority of young the, people. The, 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 the majority. The majority. Oh, yes. Yes. Go and check it. Go and check it. Look, the fact of the matter... 68%. I don't believe vote. that tradition has anything now, to do they with poverty, with else. hunger, right? The, uh, I mean, where people live on $2 a day, where... Youth unemployment is at 70%, where the level of illiteracy is so high. I mean, I don't know what traditions you expect people to hold them to. And the level with, of illiteracy means people with, are going to touch based on traditional that is what that, that, that is what you seem to think. And that's, that is what, that is 
for me, that is what would make people vote for change. Because you feel they're illiterate, that means they don't understand what poverty is. Because you and others like you have pushed out the narrative consistently that our people don't have the ability to think for, them, for themselves. Uh, and that is why they, do not have, they, 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 they would never have the ability to vote for what they think is right for them. Right? Sure we, okay, no, but then... No, 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 exactly, no, exactly. Now you're basically misquoting. Okay, you sit okay. here on television, misquoting pointing, me, pushing no, accusations pointing, that are not correct. Pointing, I mean, pointing, how do you want me to pointing, believe that the NGC pointing to will actually give facts? You just sit here misquoting me literacy. on TV. Pointing to you are, so you are just quoting, Imam, quoting me, pushing things that I haven't said. How do you want me to trust you? Let me finish. Let me finish, please. Pointing to illiteracy to suggest that somehow that means that people don't have the ability to think. So that's what I've been feel pushing. hardship and poverty. That's what I've been It's pushing. clearly wrong. Um, if that's I can generalization. Go ahead. Just, go ahead. Go ahead. Generalization. Just, um, just made. Um, that's what you're suggesting. Gentlemen, let's have, have a discussion. I think. And, and it is wrong. Let's, 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 let's have, have a discussion. Um, what I wanted to say was, first of all, we are practicing multi-party democracy because I want to pick on a point one of my colleagues mentioned about um, it's a new political party, um, you know, you're coming in. And whenever we are having elections, new parties emerge. But one of the good things about this election, and I think it's, a very, it's for the very first time, which I'm sure you'll all agree with me and we don't go into another debate, is that this is the very first time we are having such level of policy discussions for elections. Mm -hmm. And that is one thing I see when um, um, Yum Kela is having a discussion he actually projects because he understands what the dynamics mm -hmm. is all about. He's bringing out the issues and whether he's been um, in the country or not, from what he says, whether he's read it or whether it's because of he spent two years, he shows he understands and resonates with what people want. Why I've said that is because even when we talk about these grassroots issues or who has been here longer or who has belonged to these political parties, for those who've been here all their lives, for those who are all these grassroots with so very, very poor, poor parents, have they changed their lives? What we need to have is a leader that understands the needs of the people, the leader who can resonate with what people want, the but leader Nora, who can lead Let's look at the traditional the way people, of voting. Let me just interject the there. Do you think Sierra Leoneans are going to vote policy-based or just the traditional way of voting, which now, is my color is red, this person gave me money here and I'm, I have flour, I and agree, I get plus ass today, or... Yes, I agree that's a big issue, and as we are in the Standing Together for Democracy and as Campaign for Good Governance, we're pushing for a lot of policy discussions. For sure, some people are going to go along those lines. I mean, it's not just unique to Sierra Leone. It's an African thing where we resonate with our ethnicity, the regionalism, so it's not really unique to Sierra Leone. But this time around, we do believe that there's going to be a crop of people who are going to vote based on policy. That doesn't mean necessarily they will vote in NGC, but there's going to be a discussion where decisions will be made based on the policy markets that political parties, and that's where we are pushing them. So if this is a key a contributor as sure. to whether somebody gets elected or not, uh, in, in regards to the traditional way of voting, and Yum Keller seems to be talking a lot of policy, is he on the right track then? Is he, is he way wording? Is he, is he thinking that people are going to evolve way too quickly in time for the elections? Or should he be playing more traditional politics than he is, uh, you know, policy pushing? You know, quickly on that again, beyond the issues around the policy, because for sure there are quite a number of people who, even if the parties don't present policies, they'll still vote. They have their traditional parties. Yes. But I think you also have a group of people who want a change. I have interacted with so many people. I mean, change does not mean... Probably it's NGC. But they think maybe we need to try other political parties because these traditional ones have really not met our needs. I think That's the, the issue feeling. Is he has raised the bar. And like I said from the onset, what Yumkela has done, unlike what um, um, Sila is doing, he's raised the bar. <laughs> he wants to discuss Stop taking issues. jabs on the show. He wants everybody to discuss issues. He, wants, he understands these issues and he wants to solve them. The so is his popularity is, real or is it just social media? No, no, I think his popularity is his is impact real. real? The, the it could be social media it. propaganda. You, when, when you look at him, he's very strategic. When he started his campaign in Sierra he went to colleges, young people, those who he, he actually believes he can move, who can understand the language that he's speaking. You had him say to you, I needed to translate sustainable development, blah, 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 into a language. But he went to people who want to aspire like him, people who want to be like him, people who want to be like Yumkela, who will admire his policies. And clearly, those policies, I think he has well articulated than any other political candidate, right? The reality still in Sierra Leone is that you have a block vote between Southeast and Northwest, yeah. which is the APC and the SLPP. 
To break into that, we require more than a decade. You, he is going to make a lot of headways, right? And I say that again. He, he has made head, headways. Freetown, when you talk to people, every, three, every five of people you talk to, two will be NGC. We are, we are looking at those statistics. We are talking to people. I have but is been, it, isn't the hype a bit dangerous, Emmanuel? No, because if, no, if, no. if it does come that he may not uh, win this particular election, it could be dangerous for the youth vote, especially people who have no, been seeing no, him let, 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 so let popularized no, and Emmanuel, think, them think thinking that the process has been rigged. No, no, Solomon has well, been a bit quiet. I'd like okay. to hear someone's okay. uh, perspective. Absolutely. And, well, one of the things that defines um, 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 I mean, contemporary politics is populism. And this is what a lot of people would fall for. And if we have to put KKY into context, um, my, I see my brother has taken a jab at me, but I am, <laughs> I'm one person who would not respond to jabs. I love to stay focused on the issue. Um, um, Imran knows fully well that before I read law, I was also, um, I read political science as well. So I, I, I know what I'm talking you, about. You're actually missing And, me and l now. let's look at Donald <laughs> Trump, yeah? Oh, yeah. Donald yeah. Trump um, led the Republican Party. He was underestimated and he won. He was talking about change. Change not coming from White House, but change going to the White House. Macron won in France. Macron did not come from the deep-seated political institution. He set up something new, and he won. Sierra Leone is totally different. If KKY would beat the odds, it's going to be the exception and not the rule. The orthodoxy in Sierra Leone, as I sit here and we are talking about this, this is the fact. I have, I, have, I have spoken to persons who were aspiring to, to, to go to parliament, and most of them are associated with the SLPP in the southeast. I have seen some people going out to communities instead of talking about themselves and asking delegates to give them the chances. If they don't talk about murder bill, nobody would listen to them. These are some of the realities that we are talking about. When you travel nationwide, you realize that these two parties are deeply entrenched. This does not mean oh. when KKY is trumpeting the progressive message, it is not resonating with people like us or anybody. All of us love Sierra Leone. And if you ask me if KKY is suitable, it's very suitable. But if you ask me if he's the most suitable, that one is subject to debate. Can I? So, I mean, I think KKY is testing the waters. He has very smart ideas that anybody who loves Sierra Leone, those ideas would resonate with. But there is a fact that he has to contend with, and the fact is those two political institutions are deeply entrenched, and their supporters and their followers, they are so loyal to those two parties. Can I? If he beats those can odds, can it's going to be a precedent that he is setting. Okay, just a quick reminder, you are on AYV on Sunday, also listening to us on 101.6 FM. From across the country, do you think KKY is the right candidate for president of Sierra Leone? Take out your phone. If you agree, text A1 to 703. If you no agree, text B1 to 703. That question, Nabi, do you think KKY? Oh my God, that one. I've KKY, given up on yeah. my career. Do you think KKY is yeah. the right candidate for president of Sierra Leone? If you agree, text A1 to 703. If you no agree, text B1 to 703. You wanted to come in, Imran? Yes, I, I, I'm a bit bemused, and I continue to be, right, simply by seeing Emmanuel and Solomon talking about black vote, right? And I'm more than happy. Let's talk about what we should be talking about, which is about the demographic, right? Solomon Jamiro comes from Pendembu in Kailaun district. He knows that there are certain sections in that very district that you call Kailaun, right, which you consider traditionally people would want to say is an SLPP stronghold, where APC have successfully won parliament. He sits there. I come from Moyamba district, and Solomon knows very well, like my very self here sitting, that in Moyamba district you have a whole northern section where APC is sufficiently able to get parliamentary seats. I hope you understand. It's the same for both districts. Kono is completely a, sw a swing state of the southeast that people traditionally talk, I mean, talk about as being a Nesopic stronghold. I don't see that happening at all. I see a different picture. And that's the picture others are failing right, to, uh, uh, to make clear. But then if, if orthodoxy was anything to go by, if you go back to the 60s when the APC and Sheikh Stevens broke out and, and, and formed the All People's Congress Party out of the SLPP. If orthodoxy was anything to go by, like Solomon and Safar are suggesting, they would never have had a chance to win an election, right, and form a government that stayed and misruled this nation for as long as it did. So look, the reality I see, I mean, the statistics I see, the data I see, Right? And the possibilities I see in Dr. Kande Koleyum Kela and the NGC are completely different. And that is what we continue to stand by and we believe. Look, 
people are tired, right? Tired with poverty, tired with hunger, tired with, I mean, high level of youth unemployment, tired. So if he and, wants, and, and, if he wants to, to push the politics of change, we we're talking about the Citizens and, Manifesto in that interview, and he categorically said, yeah. one, he doesn't want to show off, two, he's only willing to declare his assets if the other top two uh, candidates and, then and they themselves and, stand and by. Down, isn't that, isn't that going backwards? That because he should have stood like a camera member. I have so look, much respect if, for Kandi Unkele. member actually came out and declared his assets. Imran. We have no, so much respect for Kandi Unkele. Right. He spoke about no, principles. Please. He spoke about policy. Yeah. He shouldn't be tying up his commitment to a very policy. Let me, let me make a point. He, he is very consistent. Let me make a point. He shouldn't be tying up a fundamental public policy issue. He is very consistent. So, the willingness of other political it candidates. If he's in for it, he's in for it. He Why said, must he tie his declaration or his asset declaration stated, to other candidates declaring? No, no, but, no, 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 no. no. Let's, I think, come back, let's come back to the analysis. We'll come back to the analysis. Discussion. I just want to clear that I, point. I, I, I think he had a very fantastic no, interview. No, he, he did, that is actually a point Just one second. Let's we, not we, from we, the as, we as civil society organization, yeah. our responsibility, like uh, Valnora said, is to ensure that politics, whichever, across the political circle, is about issues. We encourage citizens to understand the issues such as decision making around who you vote for is informed by the public policy priorities of the political candidate. That is what we want to do. However, we also take note of the facts that uh, we have block voted in Sierra Leone. It is not unique in Sierra Leone. There are constituencies in the UK which are, which are labor for the last 60, 70 years. But policy play a significant role. But I was disappointed to hear from Dr. Kande Yumkela that um, asset declaration for him is tied to other political parties, to other so, political so, leaders. Let, let me, let me, let me, that was can really I, a downside. Can I, can I make some clarification? Let me, let me, let me so, yeah. asset declaration. We all listen to the clips. There no, no clarification issues. He said, I will not well, do, I will not do are, this until the others them. have committed. But, I'm going to so, make so, very so issues, like, can I ever declare his assets? It's not law. It's not policy. He wasn't required to. But he raised the bar. He wants to be transparent. I'm accountable. We expect others. So one of the things we are doing this next week, Friday, is to have all these political parties. We're inviting them to come and commit themselves to not just asset declaration, but political parties financing. When I say we, I talk about the, 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 the strengthening electoral accountability and governance consortium. We're having the meeting. We're bringing them. If they come, okay. If they don't come, those who come will, will make the, the commitment. But the reality is, when as, as, when as a candidate you say, this country is corrupt, there are leakages. Some of the issues which civil society and the international community are working on to ensure that that corruption is, is minimized is asset declaration. So we know how much you have when you get in and how much you will have when you leave. We will begin to imagine that you are not going to do like, like President Kuruma did, declaring his assets in secret and we don't know what he had and when he's leaving because that's how corruption is encouraged. So we expect Kande and every other political party, every other presidential candidate, commit to that process, and to do it, to, to, yes, to do it without with. you being asked to. Let okay, me, Imran, I'll give you a chance to respond. Let me, let me state what the principle is as a political party and on behalf of the presidential candidate, right? And, and, and I'll, give, I'll, I'll do it by giving an example. I was invited to PPRC by Sludge, right, to talk about the idea of having a presidential debate. Now, we have made a clear commitment, right, that uh, as a party and the presidential ca candidate, we're committed to a presidential debate. But, I mean, the flip side to it is, you tell me what's the point in having Dr. Kande Kaleum Keller go for a presidential debate, and Samoa isn't there, right? Madabio isn't there. I mean, let us just say, let us just say, let me just say something. Let me just say something. Let me just say something. Similarly, 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 in principle, Right? We have no objections right, for the, our presidential candidate to declare his assets. He shouldn't say that. But we also think right, that as a matter of necessity right, for the people of this country, every other presidential candidate has a responsibility. Imran, we are going to. If you listen, if you listen, if you listen, let me finish, let me finish quickly, please. If you listen to his interview on 98.1, he was pressed on that particular subject and he said, yes, I am going to. That's closure for me. What did he say today? Closure he for me. Today, that's today. closure. 
that's closure for me. Yes, I have a clip where he had a copy of the Citizens' Manifesto in the US, in the town hall debate. Yes, I am going to do that. He gave the Citizens' Manifesto and promised that he would declare it. Let me give you an official position now. Let's just say, I think it's not true. An official position. I think an official position. Yes, we are coming to the presidential candidate. Because what you said earlier, you seem to be shooting yourself in the foot because if we have you've been discussing that uh, um, Kande Yumkela is different, he's coming for change, and then he wants to tie his declaration of assets to the parties that you've already claimed have not done anything since independence, then he's no, just I, been at the same level as they are. I, they are, I, they are on the same I, platform. I, I actually didn't say so. What I was giving was just a practical example in principle as to what our commitments are as a political party, right? But that we also think that, I mean, it shouldn't be done in isolation. But Kamarimba has done his. I mean, good on him Run. for that. Run. We also think every other political party has a responsibility. No, but you're different. Have, but you have, have, you have, 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 have So that's what he you said in the clip. Imran, there's a difference between you thinking other political yeah, actors should do the same. that's what he said on the clip. And we don't need it. It's fundamentally different. So it's not different. We don't need to argue over this. I am giving you an official position of the NGC and our presidential candidate that, yes, he is committed Right into declaring his asset, Thank consistent with the provisions of the Citizens' Constitution and uh, Citizens' Manifesto. Manifesto, and this is something we have taken on board fully. We, 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 closure. We, what he said. Thank you very much. Closure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, we close that. This is actually closure. quite quite different from, from what he actually said. Closure. On, on the interview, just a quick Thank one. We, we really do not have a lot of time. Okay. I would have loved to take your call. Zero two five two seven one nine five nine. I don't know if you can squeeze in one call. Fonti, do you think KKY is the right candidate for president of Sierra Leone? If you agree. Text A1 to 703. If you know agree, text B1 to 703. Let's talk about some of the changes. Uh, given he has said it's going to be a change factor that he would like to implement. He's talking about managing the economy, uh, putting inflation under control. He's talking about fighting corruption. Uh, one of those uh, key things for him to, to be able to do that is asset declaration, which is quite important. Um, he's mentioned that uh, the government is bankrupt as we stand. More hospitals. He's talking about better management of funds, youth employment. And I asked him the simple question, do you think he is overshooting yet again? Uh, he said the first 100 days is going to uh, spend time to align and choose the right people to work with him. Good strategy? I, I think that was a very good strategy. Mm -hmm. And um, I mentioned this last week in the conversation that in a country such as Asia, where every system is broken, <laughs> everything becomes a priority. Yeah. Everything you is know, a priority. everything is a priority. Yeah. But mm -hmm. he's very clear mm -hmm. in that interview that I understand this. I'm not going to promise everything so there'll be short term, medium term, and a yeah. long term. Yes. Yeah. And I particularly like the fact that he says in the first hundred days, we're going to set the system. We're going to set the tone of governance. Yes. If you are a minister, I'll sit with you. What are the outcomes? What, okay, what do you quickly, expect Let from me you? just quickly go and take a call. Sorry, uh, Idris. Hello, good evening. You are on AOMV on Sunday. What's your name and where are you calling us from? Uh, I'm Michael Patrawa. Sorry, a bit louder, please. I'm Michael Patrawa calling from Patrawa. Okay, Michael, go ahead. What is your comment or question? Uh, I just want to say... Uh, I genuinely believe in Dr. Anna Yumkela that is the man for the change. And if Sierra Leoneans are crying for change, I believe he is the one that will bring that change to Sierra Leone. I'm convinced in his principles, and I believe he will deliver. That's what I want to say. Okay, brilliant. Thank you for your short and sweet comment. If you'd like to call us on 025-271-959 for some final thoughts on what you thought about the AYV exclusive interview today with Dr. Kande Kole Yumkela, who's the flag bearer for the NGC. We will happily uh, take your calls. I think we do have another call there. Hello, good evening. Hello, good evening. Hello, Nathaniel John Koroma. Yes, Koroma, go ahead. What is your comment? Yeah, lots of comments. This is the man will understand an office you can laugh for all this office for like um um be president of this country because just like I mentioned say in Kari Bakasuka, if any president can we will still foster that relationship there with the country, you know, can see, um and they continue for down for in country. I don't feel seen that for don't do. And talking about changes, 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 we get two parties, the SLDP and the APC. If any leader will come if you can be president without acknowledging them two parties, then they I don't feel she will do anything. And I just pray that, you know, we will get a good leader. Let's know. Right. Keep calling 025 Fonti, let me know if I'm going to be running over uh, time. I know we do have the primetime news up at 9 with Patricia Conte. And 
Let's talk about whether it's a good plan. I cut you in the middle. Oh, very clear. Thank you. Call well, online. Right. Let's listen to some of our callers. I'm <laughs> it's important we give the nation Hello? a chance to speak. Go ahead. What is your name and where are you calling us from? Hello. Yes, hello. Go ahead. Anybody? Go ahead. Hello. 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 Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Caller, you can hello? make your comments. We can hear you loud and clear. All right. So I can just go ahead and make my comments. So of I'm course you can. I'm calling from Brookfield. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, um, listening to... Um, Mr. Abdullah and uh, Jamiro making like a blanket uh, assertion that people in Sierra Leone uh, belong to the Orthodox Party. I think what kind of young killer is going to bring for this particular election is going to be really different. And the best way and the best shot for any political analyst to analyze the particular situation will be the outcome of the 2018 election. There is no way. Any political analyst will get it right to say um, KKY is not going to be the next president because there is two um, popular political parties. What we have seen, looking at the dynamics, and especially looking at the, the young voters, as, as referenced by the PRO of the, the NGC, is actually what is going to happen for the next election. And so we see a major upset for the two political parties, and that upset is going to propel Kanda Yomkela to be the next president of this country. That is my own submission. All right. Thank you for calling in. Of course, Fumble them. you can call us on 025-271-959. Asking you today, do you think KKY is the right candidate for president of Sierra Leone? I am afraid to go to you because I know we're going to get a call. I know we have another caller. <laughs> go ahead. Caller, what is your name? Where are you calling us from tonight on AYV on Sunday? Okay, we lost the call. Go ahead. All right, so just to say, he, he was very clear, mm -hmm. and I think that was very impressive for me, that uh, he understand what he wants to do. He know he cannot do everything within his tenure, but uh, he said... And he's actually first, said he would scale up what is good. Yes, he'll scale up. He accepts that, that some progress good. has been done. Mm -hmm. He will scale up what is good. He will focus on strengthening the tone of governance. And if he gets it correct at that moment, that's where the problem is. He goes to a whole lot of government ministries. The ministers have no idea on what's, what's what the target is about. and what they want to achieve. Mm -hmm. So if he gets it correct there, I sit with the directors and all the other things, that would be fantastic. fantastic. He, also yeah. said, he also said something very impressive. If I see a guy there who I think he can deliver on the job, I don't he's care his political party. I'll political bring him and say, divide. come and serve your country. I think that is really, really yeah. impressive. Yeah. Yeah. That's 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 I think he said, I am going to scale up. I mean, it's very difficult for, say, a union politicians to say yeah. something has been done, I am going to scale up. Sure. And I think one major problem that a lot of people had with President Kroma was that he basically told say, Leonian there was nothing which wasn't really correct. All right, let me just stop you there, Emmanuel. Sorry, we do have a caller. Remember, our call lines are 025-271-959. Good evening. You are on AYV on Sunday. What is your name? Where are you calling us from? Yes, good evening. I'm Emmanuel Kuruma. Yes, Kuruma, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, um, I think people of Australia should understand that, you know, if we have people working a government position, like, and they they gave an input to the dam, construction dam of the Tosloko city. So people should be given credit. But I think Anis Baikoma has done a very good job because at the end of the day, he has to approve, you know, all projects going into any district of Sierra Leone. So we think credit should not be given to specific people, but it could transfer, you know, for all Sierra Leoneans. You know that they're working for the government, they're working for the country, they're working for the people of the area. So I think Karim Keller is a good man for um, the presidency for Sierra Leone. And he just needs the support of, you know, the people. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much for calling. 025 We're still taking your calls. Go ahead, Emmanuel. Uh, Mahmoud talked about, when you look at what he said about taking people from different political parties, and once you're qualified, you know he's an advanced mind. Because if you recall how President Obama appointed the Republicans into his cabinet and people, just picking a qualified person. You don't have to be a, a, a northerner, a southeasterner, a Mende or Timini. What is important is your qualification. And he believes you can deliver and he will sit with you.
So for me, those two things really resonated well for me. And I think that's a very good thing. That Nora, Nora, briefly, on that, sorry, briefly on that, I think, um, um, you know, sorry, I've Yvonne, Nora, I'll just cut you short. Mm -hmm. We do have a caller. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Yes, what is your name? My name is Jesus. I'm calling from Lomley. Go ahead. I, as, according to the investigation on the station right now, I really want to know what are the contributions I've got, I've got to this country. For how long have been been? First of all, you never believe in this country. You never stay for, in this country for at least two years. So how can we vote for this kind of party? Daniel is speaking about what is the change that Kanye and Yukara want to work in Sarajevo? Please, to get a very... Yeah. Okay, thank you. We're going to get uh, from our panelists on that particular one. Go ahead, Valnora. Say, um, based on what my colleagues have mentioned, I always think a leader, leader meaning people who want to contest or become the president, should have an ideology, should have something that they're, that they're propelling people towards. And what he's mentioned, especially throwing it back to the young people, is about nationalism and patriotism. So it's about if you have a skin, you have a talent, offer it to the nation to build Sierra Leone. If you're a young person, instead of sitting, you, you boboye, dea, mina, youth man, and you're 50 years old, and you wait to be given drugs and all these um, handouts, it's about coming in with your talent and help uh, Sierra Leone to go. And I think that, that those are very strong points. And I think it's about change. And um, um, th there is one development expert, um, John Rennish, who was talking about change. And, and, right and he was... Do we have a caller, Fonti? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I keep stopping all of you. 025271959. Good evening, caller. What is your name? Where are you calling us from? Hello? Yes, sir. What is your name? Hello? I hear you. Loud and clear. Go ahead Hello? with your comments. Hello? Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right, Fonti, I think we'll just... That one, go ahead. I think he wants to talk about change, and, and, and he wants Sierra Leoneans to try something new. And like John Rennish was talking about change, that a leader, a true leader, is somebody who must not be intimidated by change, but rather must be challenged by it. So what I see KKY trying to do is like um, change in context versus change in content. Like, I'll give you the analogy of a football coach. There is this coach who would say, I want you to play A, B, C, and if you don't do this, you know the repercussions. There is this other coach who would say, I caller. want the best to come out, out of you. I will stop you right there. Good Absolutely. evening. Hello, you on AYV on Sunday. Can you hear me? Make your comments or contribution. We'll start with your name. Hello. Yes, go ahead. Hello. Go ahead. I think it's the same young man. He might be having a bit of an issue hearing us. Um, okay, we're going to disconnect. Hopefully, he gets a chance to give his contribution. Go ahead. He's saying, play by the rules, and if you don't do A, B, C, you know the repercussions. There's this other coach who says, look, just, just give the best that you have. Just give me the natural talent. Use your discretions and your liberties. Now, if you take the two scenarios, the second option is better. It will produce a better result. And I think this is what KKY is bringing to the table. Not politics as usual, not allowing the leader's, the leader's external authority to dictate who he is, rather by the strength of his character, and, and also leading by us, like, like change within context. And I think the, this is very important. The callers, uh, the, there's a lady who called there. I didn't quite get her name, but she, she actually brought something that I've heard, you know, in the streets quite often. You know, Kadne has barely been here stationary for a long period of time, long enough to contribute. Why are we going to vote for him? He's not stayed with us. He's not journeyed with us. He's not stuck with us through the trials. And they shouldn't have voted for President Kaba because he was also not in Sierra Leone and he came in. He wasn't, he wasn't even a politician. He retired. So, so right. that doesn't really resonate. <laughs> That's funny I think, thing. I think we're also educating people to focus on, um, we, like I said, we are doing multi-party democracy. And you have a right as a citizen mm. to contest for the elections as long as you meet the criteria based on the constitution and all the regulations. And there's nothing there that says because you've worked um, outside the country for 20 years or more, you cannot contest. And we already Should have there a be a clause like that? No, there shouldn't. We already have a Shouldn't precedence. you have lived in the community you'd like to actually be so a the, key part of so the question, for at least a minimum of two so to three years? So the question here is, for all those who've stayed here since they were born, they, they, they haven't even moved to Liberia or anywhere else, have they really created the change you want to see? Yeah. The question is, I've heard this, somebody was making fun on social media. 
He says, okay, no wonder KKY is very popular with the first-time voters. He's also a first-time voter. It was really funny. <laughs> but the truth is, what does the Constitution say? He meets exactly. all the constitutional requirements. Besides, I think the deciding factor in election should be what actually the candidate brings to the table. Mm -hmm. What public policy is he preferring? And how does he create that engagement with, between him and the people of Sierra Leone? For me, mm -hmm. I think KKY is more than qualified, and he has I, changed I, the narrative I, quite significantly. I, I, another, I, I, another, I, 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 Angela, I have yes. said to people that when you put KKY and the other candidate, this is the most qualified, eloquent man. I have had in Sierra Leone politics my lifetime. Now, I have said he made mistakes about sticking it to SLPP and coming over at this point in time. In our last discussion, I told you about the crowd that he actually attracted when he came back home. And you see that there is, there is, there is this drive, the people looking for a new face, for a change, for somebody with a message. But again, I come back to the issue. Traditionally, is he going to be able to break the barriers? In, in two years. Let's hope he does. But that's going to be the biggest challenge of his. his I, don't have, um, I don't have a lot of time very quickly. Just let's talk about the rationalization matter because one of the key issues uh, that we asked him was in regards to once he gets into government, if he does get into government, what is he going to do about the wage bill? About 85 to 86,000 government employees. It says rationalization, I said. So are you going to let some of them go? Rationalization is a very nice uh, uh, term, English, uh, word. English word that just basically means you're going to let people go. No, no, I, I don't think qualified it by saying I don't really mean that people are going to go. What but what does rationalization is, mean? What it means it is... It means people are not there at all. And this <laughs> precisely the point. So the ghost precisely that is what he was saying. The, right? the way I understand it. They're not there. Are simply too many, right? And so we have a huge wage bill, mm -hmm. which government cannot continue to deal with. To foot, yes. so that is what it means and in this particular right. context. But I would like to please come back to, I mean, the, the, the question the lady posed, uh, uh, the call. And I think it speaks to a broader issue for me. Where is Kande coming from? What has he done? Interestingly enough, this is the very first time in the history, political history of this country, where uh, 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 the bar has been set so high just for one individual, right? In 1996 and in 2007, no one asked where Usai Pakabaito came from. from yeah. Where was Anis, where, 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 where is Anis coming from? Matt. What has he done for the people of this country? Matt. No. Simply because, primarily, what we're concerned with as a nation are the personality and character and how much those individuals are able to appeal to us. This is the very first time that deliberately uh, some political pundits have chosen to push out this narrative about Kande Kola Yomkela alone and not about any other presidential aspirant in this particular election. So I think in as much as we are happy to explain to people where he's kind of coming from and what he has done, his contributions to the people of this country, which predates 2010, frankly, going by my records, I think it is also proper and necessary for them to ask other presidential candidates what have they done. One thing I can say for sure, that, that of all the CVs I have looked at, Right? He's got a very decent CV. He ticks all the boxes. He hasn't got an omission. He's not somebody you would doubt that, I mean, he, has he got a PhD or not? Or you would see an omission of five years in his CV? No, consistently, he has been around, I mean, supported this country in very many ways. And that is clear. And what is good, good for the goose should be good for the gander as well. Other presidential candidates have to be asked the same question as to what they have done and where are they coming from. In but, respect to this particular election. But for, a man, uh, but for a man running for the highest office and somebody of his caliber, it's I'm not, sure... It's not wrong at all. I'm sure... It is not wrong. Thank no, you. Thank but you. I'm, but I'm sure he, he should have used the moment to say, if you're not relevant, I'm prepared to fire you. But for him to say, no, that's not exactly what I mean, I think he's succumbing to certain things, and I think it constitutes compromise. You're basically understanding it. Completely wrong, Solomon. Sorry to say this. No, we're not talking about rationalization. No, no. I'm not talking about ghost workers. I do not, I do not have a lot of time, so I'm going to give you each um, less than a minute to actually give me your parting shots and as well as your good and bad for the week. Mm. Just quickly before, as you think about that one, just to remind you, the AYV Weekend newspaper comes out every single Sunday. In fact, uh, you can see some stories there about the National uh, Grand Coalition making inroads in Koinadugu. We do see um, a story on... Um, done by our, uh, one of our key leading lights here at AYV, Samawise Bangura. Can the APC iron the Sylvia Blyden wrinkle? That one is actually quite an interesting read. And of course, uh, President Koroma, voters... <laughs>
Voters Club at 232. That one is quite interesting. Traffic will stop this past weekend. I believe the president decided to um, let his hair down, if we can actually say that, and hang out with the youth base there at uh, Club 232. We're going to start with you, Imanu um, Imran. I was going to go Emmanuel. Let's start with Imran first um, with your parting shot. Go ahead. I think my parting shot would be uh, the, the Sylvia Blyden and uh, her deputy story, right? When Give me your parting shot on this matter, and then give me your good and bad. Well, on, on, on this matter, I mean, I think uh, Dr. Kande Kaleemkela has, I mean, stated exactly what his intentions are for the people of this country and uh, what he intends to do if given the opportunity. And I think he's appealing to a lot of people. And somehow we seem to think that uh, this is a very traditional society. Well, wait till the 7th of March 2018. We'll find out that this society fully understands that it is no longer as traditional as we think it is. And uh, things will definitely change for the better for all of us. And my, my, my take for the week would be the Sylvia Blyden story and uh, her deputy. I mean, uh, 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 the, the best way to describe it would be uh, things fall apart, center can no longer hold, right? Everything is crumbling, this current government, and that is what we're seeing currently. Okay, Idris, give me your parting shot and you um, good and bad. My parting shot is, um, Kande is doing well. He understands the issues and he can articulate them very well. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen that at the, at the lower level, at the at the local level, the much as he's organizing as a presidential candidate, I haven't seen that for, for the constituency level. And governance, you have the presidency, you have parliament. If he succeeds to become president of Sierra Leone and does not have a parliament to govern, to pass laws, that would be a problem for him. Um, my, my bad for this week is the letter from the Minister of Finance to Nick, which says, we are coming to look at your books. We'll suspend giving you money temporarily. If your books are not correct, oh my God, there is a system. You have the Auditor General, the, the Accountant General, Auditor General, they do all of these things. There is a commitment for government to give NEC 10 billion weekly. It makes us feel suspicious that the government is suspending transfer of resources to NEC for some political reasons. Please, if you have questions to ask, let the relevant authorities go there and find out. Besides, the Accountant General Department, sorry, the Auditor General was just with NEC over a week ago. Why would the Minister of Finance write a letter? We're worried. I'm very concerned as civil society. My good for this week is, on Tuesday, I was at FBC with first-time voters, mm -hmm. with the chairperson of NEC. Okay. And the way young people were asking right. questions about, about elections, mm -hmm. it gives me hope. Yeah. Our voting public is much more sophisticated than we think. Okay, you. that's good. You got Thank your you. voters card. You showed us the last time. Uh, did you get your voters card? Imran? Keep it, keep it safe, yeah. Imran, did you get it's your voters card? under my box. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Solomon, give me your parting <laughs> shots and your good and bad for the week. SLPP's position on ECOWAS verdict. Um, um, I applaud the position. Let's start with your parting um, shot on this matter, and then you can give me your good and bad for the week. Um, Kande Kole Yumkela, I think your message on, on the progressives, um, I think it resonates with me and well meaning Sierra Leoneans. Please continue to talk about that. And um, I would wish you well. Our adventure, you don't get to the highest seat. Please stick around continue adding value to our country. Um, SLPP's position on the ECOWAS verdict, I applaud the party's position because it stands in solidarity with human rights. And my good for the week, I finally got my voter ID today. <laughs> Well, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And, and that's it? That's it. That's it for me. Okay, that's well. the good of it for the week. <laughs> well, Nora, give me your parting shot. I think I'd like to commend Dr. Yumkela for the way he's been interacting with the public. Um, this is the sort of policy discussions we've been advocating for. I mean, whether he wins the elections or not is another matter, but at least it lifts the minds of people and people get to understand that these are the sorts of discussions leaders those who want to contest elections or hold offices of responsibilities these are, these are the sort of discussions they should have they should be able to be in a position to educate people to get to a certain level and so i want to give sierra leoneans a message which um, campaign for good governance we are sending text um, whatsapp messages around for those who have access to whatsapp we say my sierra leone my responsibility vote wisely for the 2018 elections my good for the week let me start with the bad the bad for the week was the um, publishing of the white paper and the fact that most of the critical recommendations were not, um, were not absorbed or um, 
captured, accepted, yes, that's the word, accepted by the government. And I think it's very unfair to the people of Sierra Leone who you're representing. For those of us who were the, in the committee itself, we spent time, energy, and resources to ensure we come up with a good document. And there were many other colleagues who played a very significant role for us to get a, a proper document. I think we need to understand that these documents are not for one person or a group of people. They are for the country. And if we have a good constitution for the next 20 to 30 years, it could stand the test of time. And those are the recommendations we made. So it's very disappointing that most of the critical recommendations were not accepted by the government. The good for the week is I also picked up my ID card, and I want to commend NEC that Congratulations. in spite of the challenges of um, NCRA not having the required resources to print the, the, the biometric card that we should have had, that the multipurpose card we should have had, you've been able to find an alternative, and at least we have something, whether the pictures look bad or whatever, at least we have something that we can use to, to, to vote. So thank you for taking that initiative and to the donors who supported you. All right, Emmanuel. So, 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 you know, when we were in school, we used to adopt all the good things that those who speak before. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just adopt all of all the things that you guys have yeah. said. <laughs> so you said what you wanted yeah, to say. Because they've said what I wanted to say. Give me your passage. But, but interestingly, I think, again, like I said, Kande has appealed to the progressives. He's saying things that we've all been talking about, the things that we've, we've campaigned for. What I hope you could do and your campaign will do, not, not let Imran be attacking us like that as if we are uh, for coming from, from space, is to go down to the communities and really try to win votes. We will be very happy to see you at State House. We'll be very happy to see a man like you with the credentials, with the eloquence, and who wants to do things devoid of tribe and, and region and all of these small, small things which petty things which parties have been doing. So anyways, my, let me come to my good. My good thing is, again... Iman, I, Iman I, don't start. We're just Iman, wrapping Iman, up. I picked my ID card. <laughs> no, you don't, you don't I like you <laughs> Okay. I have to put my, my ID You had your chance. One of, Let's one of, listen one to him. One of the good things when I picked that ID was I asked myself, why is this propaganda against Nick? I walked into the, poli the place, the center, and they said, sat down, sit down, and there was actually no crowd. I mm -hmm. picked up my ID card. When, when he took my ID, he didn't give it to me to he automatically check. He turned it, and I was worried. Is this, this guy sure my name is correct or my photos are there? Then I signed, and he gave it to me, and everything was correct. Yeah, so I was wondering, it. what is this propaganda about? So I think NEC has done a good job. Let us help NEC go to match. I think that's a good thing for all of us as a all right. The bad thing is... <laughs> I think the, the bad thing is, well, no, please, next time, don't talk about this constitution, because I don't sleep. We spent hours, yeah. hours on the road, going up country, raising awareness for constitutional reform. Now, I don't understand why government think there is no need to go forward. Because when you stall a constitutional reform process, you're saying we're okay with the status quo, which we are not. The constitution that was being suggested was a progressive move for us to move from where we are to a much higher height. And it's quite disappointing that this constitutional review process has been so blatantly abandoned or rejected by the government. That's my bad of the week. Thank you, Emmanuel, and of course all my panelists, Valnora, Solomon, Mahmoud, and of course Imran Silla. We are now exactly three hours and 93 days away from Sierra Leone's date with destiny in this defining moment in the history of Sierra Leone. Here at AYV Media, we recognize the mantle thrust upon us to be the voice of the nation fully. We take our task to ensure fair coverage seriously, and we intend to honor our pledge to you, to be your home of credible, factual, and balanced news totally. In the days ahead, you can trust your official election portal, AYV Media, to keep you fully in the know on all matters election. In addition to AYV on Sunday, the hot seat with Abdul Fonti, this day with Samuel Wise Bangura, Wake Up Sierra Leone with Dwight Neal, Stella Bangura, and of course, Antonia Howard on Channel 33 AYV TV, as well as a big breakfast with DJ Jawe and Henrietta Bauer on 101.6 FM and the nightlife with our very own DJ base on AYV Radio. That frequency again is 101.6 FM. We'll continue to be your elections nerve center. All our listeners who are listening to us from across the country on 101.6 FM, I can never say enough of it, AYV Radio, our viewers on AYV TV channel 33 countrywide. 
and of course our AYV TV app worldwide. I want to say a big thank you for joining us and a big thank you to my production team as well who worked tirelessly in the background to ensure we're here with you every single Sunday. Try not to drop things until I'm done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, and um, very quickly tune in next Sunday as we evaluate the candidacy of retired Brigadier Julius Mad. This has been AYV on Sunday, and I will see you next week. Stand by for primetime news with Patricia Conte. Do have a blessed night.